I'm Aiden Matthews. And I'm Zack Snyder. And welcome back to another YouTube podcast, the one-stop shop for anything and everything related to YouTube. The show where I got ripped off by Postmates. Oh, is there some drama, some tea perhaps? You some drama. Share? Postmates never allowed to sponsor it. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, you can sponsor it, but the show if you want. No, I, um, dude, I wanted some pasta earlier. Like I was, okay. I was hankering for some spaghetti and meatballs. So I'm scrolling. It's like 927 PM. I'm looking at the Postmates stuff. I'm like searching pasta and I find quirky little place. Um, I don't remember what it's called, but there was something pasta and pizzas. It's like Antonio's pasta and pizza. <laughs> sure. Sure. So, so I'm like, Ooh, they got some spaghetti and meatballs. Let me get this shit. Well, they got a little bit of chicken parmesan. I'm going to get that too. And then uh, it came with a salad. So I was like, bet, this will be dope. Cost me like $20. I got a little coupon. I'm like, bro, this is going to be we good. We good. Uh, wait about 45 minutes. And the Postmate drivers come to my house. And uh, it, it smelled loud. Hmm. What I mean is somebody been smoking the good good, bro. Oh, somebody been smoking the good good. So I'm like, you know, whatever. I like, I personally don't care, but like, it was just a little, a little funny walking out and smelling that. So, anyways, I get my bag. I'm like, thank you, you know. Here mm-hmm. you go, you know. I get back in my house. I check my bag. Um, I just got a salad in there. <laughs> yeah. Just the salad. There's no spaghetti and meatballs. There's no chicken and parmesan. <laughs> well, what happened? Just a house salad. I look at the receipt on the bag and it says it's just some kind of chicken Marco thing. It's got the salad and it's got a cheese pizza and garlic knots on the receipt. All this shit is on the receipt. I hmm. open up my app. I have been charged $50. Bruh. <laughs> And I didn't get anything but a salad. How the fuck that happened? I'm assuming these motherfuckers decided they were hungry. So uh-huh. they decided to order with my fucking account or something. Like, I don't know how it happened. It's so wild. Uh, you're, you're, you're blaming the driver, not the, not the, not the pasta establishment. For... Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, dri- I'm blaming the driver. No, okay. like, 100%. I, see. I don't think it's the pasta establishment. I'm sure they got good pasta. Like, I might try it again one day. Because um, <laughs> I want some pasta. Sure. But, um, you know, it was it was a fine salad. You know, had a little bit of ranch dressing and shit. I went on the app. I got a refund. Postmates gave me all my money back, so I'm all good. Good, good. Um, you know, but it was just, uh, I thought it was a pretty, pretty interesting story. Well, well, just know that somebody ate good tonight, you know. It just didn't <laughs> <That's>... happen. <laughs> That's what you. I said to Jay. I told Jay this story, and he was like, "This got me fucked up." And I was like, "At least somebody eating good tonight." Yeah, <laughs> me though. They probably loved the pasta, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah he had How a was the salad? Pizza and some garlic knots. You know, the salad was good actually. I said okay. it was all right. It was good. I need to eat more salads because I, I feel like I could, I could, I could get get used to some more salads. I fuck on some salads occasionally. Yeah. Damn. Well, I'm sorry you got slighted, bro. Um, it was uh, it was an unfortunate situation. You I know. agree. I feel like it's the worst thing that's happened in 2021 so far. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope it stays that way. Let's hope that's Let's the number one it. thing you complain about by the Let's end of hope. the year. Was the one pasta dealing that yeah. gone wrong, gone bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and with that, everybody, welcome to. <laughs> to another youtube podcast the first one recorded in 2021 wow hey the past two episodes you heard were uh recorded back in november and december Mm -hmm. um and zach put them out to to start fresh trying to upload these bad boys once every week and now we're back in recording at 2 19 a.m my time yeah 3 19 for me it's the 11th yeah three days until my birthday bro Oh shit! Yeah. You know what that yeah. means, everybody. I'm going uh-huh. to the geriatric ward soon. <laughs> if I don't see some happy thirtieth at Zack Snyder Prod on Twitter, 
and be very disappointed in all y'all for forgetting. So, better step your exactly. shit up. <laughs> yeah, but no, it's a new year, uh, new podcast, new flow, new drip, honestly. And uh, today, we just figured we'll do a simple Your Week on YouTube episode. You know, kind of get everybody yeah. caught up to date with what we're doing, what we've been doing. And kind of kind of give you an idea of where we're at first couple of weeks of 2021, which I know have been a pretty busy, a lot of exciting world events going down, yeah. a lot of a quirky people in power doing quirky things, uh, but we're going to try to keep it on the on the YouTube side of things. Yeah, exactly. That's why I started um, with the Postmates story and not like, you know, anything political. Figure I get you. I get get you. It started lighthearted. I, um, do you think yeah. somebody like accidentally might have clicked on this podcast and was just like, oh man, this pasta story is hilarious. I hope the whole rest of the podcast is like this. And then they get to this part and they're like, oh, YouTube advice. This is not what I wanted at all. Yeah, <laughs> they, I get, hope like, not. Real, they get real mad and dip and they're like, fuck, I want to hear more about Zach's pasta antics instead. I mean, I, I feel like, I feel like we interject some, some comedic shit every once in a while but i'm yeah. not gonna cap and say that like the whole episode will be funny right i i, I just think you know if if the come up were to come back that that your postmates comedy stand-up routine could go places i think you could find an audience pretty pretty, pretty quickly i think you're right one day i'm gonna do stand-up comedy but i'm not gonna wait till covid's over for that one the mood. mood but uh we are going to be talking about the new year what we did at the end of december what we do in the beginning of january but before that i want to give a quirky little shout out to our little sponsors today oh yeah you know the good boys over at awesome creator academy with the youtube starter kit I've heard of them before. Please please continue. Yeah, so if you're just getting started on YouTube, and today we're going to be talking about content creation. Well, that's next week. I'm stupid. (laughs) Stay (laughs) tuned next week. Zach's getting started (laughs) on YouTube, bro. We're getting started on YouTube. And you have a little bit of money to throw around. Why not check out the YouTube starter kit? For only $99, you get over $1,500 of value. Dozens of downloads from templates. For advanced YouTube thumbnails, channel artwork, in cards, lower thirds, royalty free background music, fonts, and more. Pay one price, have unlimited access to future downloads as they come out in the future. Check out the link in the description or the show notes, and in doing so, you'll be supporting another YouTube podcast. But of course, if you don't have $100 and you still want to support this podcast, after all, someone's birthday is coming up, right? You mm-hmm. might want to drop a dollar or two in the jar. Throw a little cheddar. You can become a supporter on Anchor at anchor.fm slash another dash YouTube podcast. You can decide to support us financially at $1, $5, or $10 a month, and we'll read your name on the podcast. While we plan to do this podcast for a really long time, the more financial support we have, the easier it'll be for us to maintain a consistent schedule and to be able to afford Zach's meds. Mm-hmm. Very important, that one. Because I, yeah. I just wonder sometimes if, like, you know, it's not that Zach hasn't been taking them. It's just that he doesn't have them sometimes. So you yeah, kind of have to go in blind. It's a tough time for, for all of us. And some of us, it's it's even more tough. But uh, anyway, thanks to everybody that listens to the podcast. Thanks to Awesome Career Academy for that nice little affiliate sponsorship. And uh, yeah. You can check all that stuff out in the show notes or the description box below. With all that being said, Zach, how was your week on YouTube? So, yeah. it's uh, it's been a busy start to the new year. Okay. Uh, it, December, so, you know, we hadn't really recorded since, like, the beginning of December. So, December, I, um, I brought in, like, a bunch of client shit, like... Like I'm, I'm, I'm really busy with work right now and it's, it's a really good thing. Like I'm, I'm really happy about it. Uh, but it also means that like not a whole lot of YouTube stuff is happening. <clears throat> like I, I'm not doing nothing obviously, but, um, it's, it's definitely like, I've been more busy with client stuff beginning of this year than I have in like, 
like ever. Like that's it, equally insane. as exciting. Some some weeks, you know. I think so. I think yeah. so. I think um, one of the things I want to look to this year is is recognize the client and the entrepreneur side of what I do. Um, recognize those things as positive a little bit more because usually I just wake up and I'm like I got work to do. I can't work on it again. I can't live stream because I gotta go edit all this other stuff. And it's kind of like I'm ungrateful for it. Um, cause some days I'm ungrateful for it, <laughs> but, um, but like it, it is really, really dope that I get to like do this for a living right now. Um, and so I started working with a bunch of different smaller, um, smaller pieces of content, a lot of like LinkedIn posting clips of like podcasts or live streams or something like that and having little captions. I've been doing that for a while, but we added a couple more people. For that um the big one though is i started editing for a guy named pat flynn who some people listening to this might know of he's actually um he's an entrepreneur he's got a few books he's very big into like passive income and um i'm sure he has his own clients and he does a lot of Again, like if you've heard of like Gary V, if you've heard of like Roberto Blake, which we've talked about in the past, he's very much in right. that kind of circle of online entrepreneurship. And he uh, he started a hobby side channel doing Pokemon card stuff. <laughs> yeah, boy. So, you know, it's kind of crazy that I I grew up my entire life not having any affiliation to Pokemon. And uh, as these past few years have continued... Mm-hmm. The the amount of Pokemon related stuff in my life increases, which is it's, insane. <laughs> it's funny that you can, at this point now, draw a line from the Pokemon waifus video to here. You know, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's just a line that exists and is real <laughs> and is valid. You know, like you you made a video about ranking the fuckability of Pokemon. Played Fire Red, and now you're editing a Pokemon card. <laughs> and in Multi Battle League, too. That all happened Multi in like. Multi Battle uh, League, Pokemon yeah. Go. Pokemon Go. Uh, I feel like it started technically with Pokemon Go. And I have like little bits of Pokemon related stuff from when I grew up, like very small things. Friends would give me cards or something like that. I tried to sell some. Um, but it's just, it's just wild. How, how very insignificant this franchise has been for me my entire life until the past few years <laughs> yeah. where it has started to ramp up. Like, I'm I'm expecting by 2025, I'm just going to be a full-out PokeTuber. Like, it's, it's going to happen. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. All right. You know, Hype mine for is the, the Nuzlocke, touching kids bro. thing. Oh, yeah. Um, well, you know, the, the grooming <laughs> yeah, part yeah. of the community is a bit different for sure. But no, Zach just DM'd me. He's like a... Uh, Yo, you got any of those like models you use for multi battle league stuff? I'm like, yeah, why, why, why you need them? And like, I need Gengar. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go find Gengar. <laughs> Yo, we're, we're Gengar at, bro. So I give it to him, and it, it, he just shows up in a Pokemon card video. I'm like, oh, they're Gengar. All right, yeah, cool. They're for like 1.3 seconds, you know. Happy I to be of uh, assistance, you know. But um, yeah, I'm gonna be doing like three videos a week for him as we start getting a little bit more into it. Um. But it's uh it's really cool. It's called Deep Pocket Monsters. Go check it out if you're interested. He's kind of, uh, he's kind of been a collector for a little while, but he's also looking at cards as like a investment tool. So he talks about the money side of things a little bit. Um, it's a it's a really really interesting project, and it's really cool to be working on it. It was a really cool edit too when I when I saw the the first video you had done for him. I'm like, wow, Dang shit's cool. great. It's a, uh, you've always been like a really good editor, I'd say, like uh, more than me or, you know, some of the homies have been, but like doubly so when it comes to like client shit. Like I'm not saying Yin don't got good editing, they do very frequently, but like some of the client yeah. shit's on another level. <laughs> it's, um, well, it's like for one, the, the style for certain clients is definitely different from my style of videos. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other is like for certain clients, they, they give me like some really high quality footage to work with and a lot of footage. And usually like I can, I can turn that into 
you know, something meaty. Whereas, you know, Yin videos, I definitely put a lot more editing into them now. Uh, but, you know, I'm not doing a whole lot of those crazy transitions and sound effects and stuff for Yin. And maybe I will at some point. I don't know. Not really what I'm going for, per se. But I do right. appreciate that. It's a different type of energy. I really do appreciate it. Yeah. So I, I've been doing that. Um, and that's like all this new client stuff has really taken a lot of time from me. Uh, I also got into a call with uh, Mr. Dan Giesling, who we've talked about a little bit on the podcast. He is we have. the co-host of uh, Check the Wire with Northern Lion. Um, he's a he's a gaming YouTuber and streamer. And I got on a Discord call with him a few days ago about doing some like really minor editing work for him um taking some vods and putting them up on his on his channel i'm still waiting to hear back about like official results on that so i'm hoping you know monday is it, it's monday now but like once the day you know once it's not 3 31 a.m i'm hoping <laughs> there's more on that and that'll be cool yeah i agree it's uh we literally talked about him with the check the wire stuff and occasionally brought it up and then they stopped doing check the wire and i'm like oh mm-hmm. okay this might be the last time he's brought up and then uh nope just like that man's on twitter asking for for help editing like vods and clips and stuff so yeah it, it, it's like it's cool enough that i got a chance to talk to him in a call so like you know if i don't get it like he at least knows of me and and maybe there will be more opportunities in the future but um yeah, it was it was cool. I found that to be really neat. So now you can draw a line from Check the Wire to another YouTube podcast. You know, that's hey, uh, <laughs> just saying the, con- the connection is there. The connection this is, is there. true. Uh, another wild and kind of opportunity thing that happened was uh, back in 2019. I wrote an article on Medium dot com called "Go to College, Skip the Degree." And it was just like, like we've talked about it a lot on the podcast, how I went to college for four years. I didn't graduate, basically dropped out, uh, but I'm very happy about it. Like, obviously, like me doing that led me to being able to be an, a freelancer and an entrepreneur and, you know, do this podcast and do a lot of things that, that we talk about here. Um, but this article is like kind of detailing that at a, in a very like early 2019 kind of way. Um well, this, this woman named uh, Julia, make sure I'm getting the name right, Julia McCoy, she commented on my article and asked me if I'd be willing to do an interview for a website called SaveTheTuition.com. Um, and basically, she has a book coming out called Skip the Degree, where it talks <laughs> about, like, don't go to college <laughs> or don't yeah. graduate or whatever, right? Um, she's doing it. She's, she's co-writing it with, uh, with a professor who's worked in colleges and now she's like a avid, uh, kind of, um, apparently it says created by two dropouts that are teaching a new era of relevant forward thinking students. And, uh, Julia McCoy dropped out of college and then the professor, Dr. I Zhang, she dropped out as a professor, I guess. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like a really, you know, I, I love talking about disrupting education and not finishing college, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I got to do a, like a little interview where I filled it out. Um, and then that's going to be launching alongside the book that launches in February. And then the, the professor, Dr. Zhang wants me to come on to her LinkedIn live stream in April. So I'll be able okay. to talk to her about like you know these kind of things on a live stream so that'll be really really cool too exciting opportunities knocking on the door for sure for sure i get to continue my spread of fuck college like it's <laughs> it's pretty awesome <laughs> and be featured in a book too wow yeah for sure um it was a little crazy because as i was filling out this interview I, I was telling you a little bit i started to get um what was it? What was it called? Uh, shit. What's the word I'm looking for? Think, think, big brain. Ah, my That's brain. What happens when you drop out of college? Everybody, Your brain don't. Work you forget stuff. words. <laughs> you forget <laughs> everything. Nostalgic, bro. sentimental. 
Uh, no, hold on, hold on. It's 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 I it, it's right on the tip of my stupid tongue. Um, imposter syndrome. There it is. We imposter did it. syndrome. Cause like I'm still super early into this creative entrepreneur thing. Like we all are when we talk on this podcast. Um, so it's like it's really weird to talk about it sometimes. Uh, to people that's not Aiden. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know on another youtube podcast um so i had to like put into words like what it is i do and um it was like asking about income if you're you know willing to sh- kind of willing to share that and i'm like well i don't make a whole lot so i don't really see any reason in putting that on there Might it's well. like asking about a website and i'm like I should probably i should probably make a website um, <laughs> just kind of these things that that was was it had me thinking like um, I should probably put a little bit more effort into the the full identity of being like a, a freelance video editor mm-hmm. because like I do it and it pays the bills um, and I continue to like get these opportunities but I, I don't really market myself as that a whole lot um, because I'm you know I try to get the whole like my own creative shit out there a lot more Um but I, I think I'm going to start putting a little bit more stock into that in this, this upcoming year and, you know, make a website and get a little more active on LinkedIn. And right. Because up until this point, like, know, people find you, really. Like, you have It's almost exclusively like that, right? Yeah. It's never the um, reverse. <laughs> which is a good thing. Like, I, I find that as a good thing. I don't have to, like, try a whole lot to go find stuff anymore. Um, and you know, it'll definitely happen if I lose some clients, it'll still be hard to go find stuff. Um, but it's, it's almost like that whole build it and it comes to you mentality. It works, but I should probably have like a landing page that people can go, you know, see like a portfolio of this is what I've worked on. These are the people I've worked with and all that kind of stuff. Put some more stock into it. Get some leverage back. In your corner. For sure. For sure. Um, it's, uh, with all of that said. Oh, go ahead. It's a, <laughs> it's a, it was a type of thing, too, where, like, you had told me all about this, and I, and I kind of thought a little bit of myself as, like, yeah, no one plans to just drop out of college, right? Like, nobody, uh, most of the time, people just, like, do it, or it's a thing where it's, a month before you know you're going to and then you do it it's not like you had it built up for four or five years and had a big like grand scheme plan or whatever it's like <laughs> yeah no like a lot of the time it was just like life dealt these punches and it was reacting and adapting to that stuff so i can imagine if you're filling out an interview like that where you're like i didn't really do anything crazy i just you know adapted to what was in front of me <laughs> like you know and yeah. that, that's that's still a skill yeah. set we're, we're celebrating and talking about too um but i think that's for the sure. case for a lot of people who, who drop out of college is it's not like nobody goes into it thinking they're gonna drop out right it's always mm-hmm. uh, because of this i had to do this type scenario i i think i i think i'm in the minority when it comes to i decided i was going to drop out a year and a half before i did mm-hmm. and uh, i finished four years because a lot of people don't do that if they're going to drop out um but even then like honestly i wished i went into college knowing that i wasn't going to graduate because then i could have made even more out of the experience right, right. um but no you're you're 100 percent right like anybody that goes to college doesn't just plan to just not finish finish usually <laughs> yeah they plan to graduate that's usually the goal with college um so it's it's cool to find more people that are kind of having these convers you know having these conversations because i think they're super important and it's i, I mean we, we've seen it before with a lot of like self-made entrepreneurs where college either didn't play a role at all in their their career or it was dropping out played a role in their career right. so I, I only see that as happening more and more with the, yeah and I'm know. glad they're making it an option I'm glad it's like finally a viable thing um, not only in results and seeing success from people but I also really like the idea of a book like this coming out 
destigmatizing it from a social perspective because that's the hard part now i think Mm -hmm. it's not that like the financial side or what am i going to do with my life like those are big questions but it's almost the hardest part it's just living with the college dropout label that that comes associated and having to talk with your family and friends and everybody else who might have graduated Mm -hmm. or might have moved on like the social side of things is still super super rough so it'd be cool if like you know more people heard the word college dropout and didn't think immediately oh that guy's a failure you know yeah kind of changed uh, the culture around the word yeah yeah because like when i was starting to have the conversations with people around me like I was, I was talking to some really close friends of mine in college. I was like, yo, uh, I'm not going to graduate. <laughs> they were like, what are you, what are you talking about? Right. Like, like I, um, you know, and, and there were, there were definitely instances where people visibly saw me drop responsibilities mm-hmm. all the time. Like I was, I was visibly not going to all of my jobs properly, not going to classes, not showing up to all rehearsals not going to all my fraternity events. Like I was dropping the ball big time visibly to a lot of people that didn't realize exactly what I was doing. Um, And it's like socially, like it kind of sucks um, because it's still like, I still wonder to this very day, like what did certain teachers think about me? Um, What did certain, you know, friends and colleagues think about me? What do they, what do they think about me now? What will they think about me in the future, right? Like, these are people that I looked up to, or at least, you know, they, I was around them all the time, right? So, it makes sense. And then, similarly, like, family, right? Like, That's my grandma point. my grandma still tells me, I hope you can go back and finish your degree. I'm like, I, oh, I don't wow. have, I don't have the patience to explain to her why I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Um. But, you know, I think I think my parents are starting to understand my mom for sure um, completely, completely at least understands where I'm coming from and um, supports me in, in any of my decisions, which is really cool. I think my dad is starting to understand it a little bit when <laughs> I start getting more opportunities. Right. Um, but I, I, I don't think he'll even completely understand it until I've quote unquote made it right or bought a car or some shit <laughs> like hey right like it's got to be right. a physical thing for him that you can be like hey look i did thing I'm like oh you i, did I thing. think so because yeah. a lot of, a lot of the time I, I can imagine from from their perspective and, and grandparents perspective that it's like oh people who drop out of college are just lazy right like it's mm-hmm. a laziness thing like you you're doing it to go back home you're doing it to not face the responsibilities you're doing it for Cause it was too hard or Mm -hmm. or you weren't smart enough or whatever type of shit. And it's like, no, not at all. Um, Mm -mm. a lot of the time nowadays it's either like they had a better option and a better plan like you did, or it was a thing that happened with me or, um, Ethan's girlfriend recently where it was just like emotionally way too much to deal with. And, uh, yeah. Led to key depression and, uh, things that kind of, made things tough for the next couple of years or so. And that, that's just, that's just a common thing. It's just a very common thing for people, mine and your age to drop out either a year, two years or four years into college and just be depressed for like two or three years of not knowing yeah. what else to yeah. do. And, uh, I'm not saying you didn't have a little bit of that as well, but it is at least somewhat cool to, to know that there were there were other more positive reasons, I guess, and it wasn't purely just yeah. I'm depressed. <laughs> For sure. I mean, there was there was definitely some of that, and there was definitely like, you know, different different you know burnout from college, um, having a lot on my plate with my home life and work life balance. Like, there's all these like other factors for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like going to school, going to going to college, graduating with a degree. Honestly, it's it's super easy, dude. Like it's yeah. not hard at all if you just go and take the proper classes and get it done. My my experience with college was so wildly different because I was like, yo, I have all these experience or these opportunities, these experiences that I can have. Like why would I just go and do the same classes that everybody else in my degree program is doing 
then I can go take a Japanese class or I can go take an art class or a freaking like intro to guitar class. Like these, <laughs> these things were like fun to me. And I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. Um, and so that kind of, you know, put me in a situation where they were like, you're not going to be able to graduate on time. I'm like, cool. What if I just don't graduate? <laughs> LOL. Maybe that um, was the plan the entire time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that ended up being the plan like halfway Later. through my junior year, yeah, yeah, yeah. which was, which was neat. Like when I had that awareness, I was like, all right, cool. Now I'm going to make college my business. Damn, shoddy. Um, Furman is like, I'm not your shoddy. <laughs> not your shoddy. <laughs> like you quote me on that one. I gotta remember to show you a, 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 a macro image um, that says, damn, shoddy, okay. I'm, I'm gonna send it to you right now. I can't okay. show this on the screen yeah, <laughs> for for very specific reasons. Okay. Um, but I'm gonna send it to you because I think it's <laughs> really funny. Damn. Who are you in this image? <laughs> Bro, honestly, I could probably be both. Like, why okay. not? All right. All right. Like, that's all I'll say. That's all I'll yeah, say. Yeah, we'll leave, we'll leave it at that. Um, anyways, I... You're going to have to get rid of this image. I'm going to be looking at it the whole time. Yeah, I spoiler tagged it, but I'm going to get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> with, with, that. The, with the new year happening, I definitely have been thonking. Think, thonking. I've been thonking about content, bro. Big um, thong. Big thonk. And so, you know, trying to keep the YouTube podcast consistent, we're actually learning to do that for once. It's like a, a big goal. And then, um, obviously, like, I want to put out more yins. I want to put out more content of mine. Um, hadn't, hadn't had an episode come out this month yet. Did have an epic Christmas video come out. So I'm happy I made that happen. Heck yeah. Um, but, you know, in the process of some other videos... Literally, I uh, literally wrote a script earlier today, so I have two scripts right now. I just got to record and then start editing them, bad boys. Mm -hmm. And then that's that's like that's like it right now. Like I might stream at some point again, but streaming it in like a full in my in main priority at the moment. One day Sound I'll wake in. up and be like, I gotta stream some more, and then I'll you know stream some. <laughs> That's been my week on YouTube, bro. <laughs> Neat. I loved every bit of it. Thanks. It was truly special. Um, we love my you week and you're special. <laughs> yeah. 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 How's your week? <laughs> my my uh week or month on YouTube. Um, so November and December is always um when things start going places for Blue Catch Productions because I'm one of those quirky kids that uh was born in November. So, mm -hmm. a birthday happens on the 7th, right? And then Christmas is right around the corner the next month. So, LOL, time to make big money moves on buying shit for Blue Catch Productions that I wouldn't normally do. Type shit. Sure. So, November comes along, and I don't really, like, do that. <laughs> I, like, get a new 4K TV <laughs> in an entertainment <laughs> center because my old TV died, and I want to be able to, like, watch 4K stuff, so... It was more yeah, of a me thing. Uh, but then Christmas came around, and I'm like, yo, it is finally time for me to build a new computer. The iBuyPower PC with the little flaming Chimera, whatever the fuck, <laughs> yeah. PC has served me well for four years. Got that bitch back in uh, Christmas 2016. It's time to move on. It's time to move on, because... Uh, I've noticed in streaming and in, in recording and in editing that there are clear technical limitations of things I want to be able to do, but I cannot do. So I'm like, for you know sure. what? For Christmas, I'm just going to get PC parts. We'll see how far we get, and we'll figure it out from there. Um, and so that started with getting the $100 from Twitch, the payout, right? And I'm like, mm -hmm. yo, I'm going to use this to get the internal Elgato capture card. So I got that. That was the first part. Then I started looking for components online, researching PC stuff, watching way too many tech videos, got the parts together, ordered it, and uh, now I have a new computer, pretty much. Hey. You can find out that process in my 2021 
PC build video featuring Ethan, which was a, a, a smaller type of video, very similar to Quest for Soccer, where it's just kind of like we're vibing, dorking around with like a task at hand, and this one was building a new <laughs> computer, and I didn't really know anything about it. So that was fun to put together, and all of that to say, uh, yeah, it really has unlocked some doors. Um, for LHG shit specifically, a 30-minute Stardew at 60 FPS would take upwards of an hour. Now we're going 30 to 45 minutes, right? Hell New yeah. 30 for 30. That PC build video, normally, again, like an hour this time, 30 minutes. So I'm like cutting in half the amount of time I would spend rendering. And uh, what gains I got in rendering and editing, while cool, also applied to streaming as well. Because now, and this literally just happened last stream, I did my first stream in 60 FPS. Hey. And my computer ran fine. And I figured out all my internet issues. And I didn't have any dropped frames, like, <laughs> at all. Um, it's the little things, right? It's, it's, it's the little, like, quality of life improvements is my stream any better than it was last time probably not but like <laughs> the internal capture card like sure does help make games look nicer it sure is nice not having it disconnect because of a usb cable it sure is nice that i can stream 60 fps little little improvements like that where i'm able to stream more comfortably i'm able to render and edit faster uh all blue couch productions videos going forward are also 60 FPS. Uh, the PC build one one, just because I didn't know. I think that should work. So it's going to be mm. 30. There's one more video that'll be 30 FPS, uh, just because I filmed it again before I got the new computer. But everything, like the new 30 for 30s, and, and anything coming from Blue Couch Productions, this is the year I'm switching over to 60 FPS, whether it's my content, uh, LHG, whatever. Like, wanted to make that switch for a long time could not do it because of technical reasons now i can mm. yeah it's hype it's it's one of those things where like you know we've talked about in the past like buying new equipment like isn't something you should do early on because like you know you got to figure out how you're you know the the machinations of content creation first you don't know like, if you'll love you love it yeah. exactly but like once you get into it like Bruh, buy all the equipment you can afford because that shit help a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it is. Um, I remember when I upgraded my PC like a, about a year ago, uh, shit changed my life because I was just able to like render shit faster and do things like my editing software doesn't bottle like bottleneck or anything when I'm editing. I'm like It's wonderful. It's is, a wonderful feeling. <laughs> okay. yeah. And it'll allow me to um, in the future once I get a new graphics card, because I'm still using my old one, I'm just waiting for him to come back in stock. Uh, once I get that final piece, I'll be able to do some other cool things as well, like finally switch over and uh, retire Sony Vegas and, and move hey. on to DaVinci Resolve. So Love to hear that one, honestly. That, that, uh, that editing program is GPU-based, mostly. So I'm really going to see improvements with a, with a better GPU. So that's, that's holding me back on that point. But I really want to learn that new system and and figure that out and see if I can sure. improve things from a, from an editing perspective as well. Because like honestly, there's not much else I can you know really change. I'm mean, I'm really happy with my audio. I'm really happy with my camera. I need a new lens for it at some point that can mm. let in a bit more light. Um, and I want to get some nice LED panels and not just the shitty soft boxes I have. But uh, for sure, those are all things I can wait on at least the the computer and this internal capture card was like something i probably should have got back in 2018 but for whatever reason either put it off or didn't think i was ready for it yet but now that i'm finally here it feels way more appropriate to like be able to appreciate it because i waited so long <laughs> to get to that point oh, it I feels bet. nice yeah. it feels really nice it does it definitely does i'm gonna be a um, Fixing up a couple more stream things, too, where I want to get the DSLR set up and everything, but I'm missing a few pieces there as well. But that's all the technical stuff. That's all the, the equipment things. In terms of actual content, right, uh, December mm -hmm. mostly saw me uh, finishing up any obligations for LHG from the previous year. So, like, Breath of the Wild came out. 
got rid of my Super Mario World footage I had been holding on my hard drive for like two or so years. Like, uh, Stardew is two episodes away from being done. That type of stuff. Like, it's all cleared. I got the schedule cleared. I'm not busy. I'm not backed up with like four series that I got to work on. So that was nice. Aiden on Acre starting back up. YouTube podcast starting back up. I mentioned how I streamed earlier. Which, uh... Pretty much just brings us to the the two new videos. The PC yeah. build video, which I talked about earlier, kind of a smaller scale, fun. Aiden's mainly editing for comedy and not so much informative stuff type of shit. So Yeah. I had like two hours of footage on, on that bitch just sitting there and I'm like, Yeah, we're cutting down. <laughs> we're cutting my first <laughs> cut of that video was like fifty eight minutes or some shit. Oh my goodness. That I thought was worthwhile. And then I rewatched it again. I'm like, no, it's not. And then it got <laughs> got cut down a lot more. Yeah, it would have so. taken me a little while to get to that until a 58-minute video. But, yeah. Know. yeah, It's a lot harder to ask somebody to sit through and watch that. But, like, you know, 30. Sure, why not? Yeah, it was a good video. I enjoyed it. And then the, the Sonic 3 Knuckles 30 for 30, which was supposed to be before Christmas. Then it was supposed to be the Christmas video. Then it was supposed to be the New Year's video, and then it was just, well, <laughs> hey, Friday's coming up, and it's the first Friday of the New Year. I'm up yeah. on the first Friday of the New Year, and then it came out. So, just a just a very fun and relaxed 30 for 30. Probably my favorite of the Sonic episodes. I know people really like the Sonic 2 one, uh, but I don't know. There's a lot of interesting shit in, in 3 and Knuckles. It's a game I hadn't played a whole lot. Yeah, it was a good video, too. The plan Which right now... I like the vibe. Yeah. Yeah, you told me that. It was very sweet. Uh, the plan right now, at least for Blue Couch production stuff, is one video every every week. Um, cool. Right now, it's Friday at 11 a.m. my time. Could be different. Who knows, right? But, like, yeah, Friday is the day sure. I have set for it in the same way that Sunday is for YouTube podcasts in the same way that Monday is for a non-anchor. Friday is what I want my YouTube videos to come out on. Uh, and we've done it for two weeks. Hope to fill in the rest of the weeks, too, and be like, wow, I got a video for every week. So That'd be cool. I, I hope you're able to do it, man. I got plans. I got plans. Uh, got a lot recorded. Got a lot of things done. So it's just a matter of uh, editing them, putting them together, and uh, getting fully into the transitionary period i was talking about where i'm kind of like half and half between old and new shit and i want to just work on new shit for sure but i yeah. don't know i'm looking forward to it it's hard it's to so uh hard. it's hard yeah. to to not feel uh obligated to certain things right and be like well mm. you know i want to work on other stuff but 30 for 30 going to be in the back of my head till that finale come out. <laughs> I'm not going to oh, be able to think that. about anything else until it comes out. And I, f- I feel the same way for LHG. I feel the same way for side projects, long running series, right? Where it's like, I have a really innate desire. If I start anything, then I'm finishing it. Like every let's play I've started, I finished every major season or series that I've started. I finished the only mm. thing I've quit literally uh, is like, certain side channels or side projects that didn't go anywhere and like dark souls <laughs> that's it <laughs> like if you look at a grand souls. scale of a- everything aiden has quit project wise if i started a video series or a video thing i, I finished it it may have took a lot longer but aiden doesn't quit series and shit like hey, that. even then you ended up making a dark souls video so hey yeah yeah there you go no, I get you. I um, I still need to make my favorite things of 2020 video. I still need to make my worst things of 2020 video. I got like an Oscar video from last year, like still in the works. Like there's like three or four 2020 related videos that I need to get finished. And I'm like, oh, bro, like they got to come out soon or because the, the later I hold off on them, the, the less relevant they're going to be. And they just and won't like, come out. <laughs> and they just won't come out. Where they'll just come out in a random moment, and it's like, okay, cool. Why'd you put this out in in fucking May? Like, yeah, I don't know. I get it. A whole fresh yeah. twelve views for me. Thank you. That's yeah, great. I put out a Christmas video in in like March last year, and that was funny. I don't want to do that again. 
you got one out this year. No, you're already on I a did. on a, on a better did. track. That was so. cool. Yeah. It's cool to it's cool to see that uh not just you and me, but everybody in the in the group has taken like a fresh step forward and like trying to get things out on YouTube, whether it's me, you, Jay or Parker, like we've all I think more than previous years have like a new resolve to like get a lot of shit done this time around, which hadn't always yeah. been the case. Yeah, for sure. I feel like it's always been like one or a couple of us. Um, and then we, we have like half baked attempts or, you know, it takes us a couple months to really get in the groove of things. So it's, it's really cool to like start the new year and everybody kind of be on the same page of let's, let's, let's do this thing this year. Like, let's make it happen. Um, and I'm still trying to get my actions to fully, you know, be around that idea, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, and it, it, it'll, you know, it'll take time, but it, at the least it's, it, it's very helpful to see everybody else go hard. And that's, it, it's really dope for sure. I almost feel bad talking about it. Cause I'm like, I'm going to jinx myself or jinx yeah. somebody else. And I'm like, eh, yeah. should I say I'm doing this? Should I say I'm Ooh. doing that? How much of it can I just keep to myself? But, uh, yeah, I'm still huh. keeping like you know video ideas and shit to myself until it like yeah. happens because I get it. You know, can't can't say too much. It's only January, you know. And if I yeah. tell you everything I'm doing this year on another YouTube podcast, you're just gonna come back in 2022 and be like, "Well, you did a uh, two of the 86 things, so you know that's not zero. I'm like, "Yeah, but I had 84 yeah. other things that I said and I didn't do any of them, so. Yeah, usually I'm, I'm, I'm inwardly disappointed in myself and outwardly disappointed in myself. <laughs> yeah. So this year, I only want to be inwardly disappointed in myself. There you go, progress. You know, I gotta, you know, show a bunch of stuff throughout the year, be excited about what I've done, and then when I go to bed at night, be like, man, I definitely could have done more, but nobody else realizes that. That's the plan. There you go. Underachieve. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like, hey, we talked about it before, but I guess this is the last thing I'll say and then I'll, I'll end the segment. But like, mm-hmm. seriously, it is so, so important to me and uh, really everybody's what they're doing to try and at least not be so hard on ourselves with everything we do because I know like it's very easy with any of us to have one little thing not go our way and then be like well time to resign to my cubby hole for four months and not say anything (laughs) like type shit you know we've all done it we've all done it and it's and it's for and it's for things that like we were ultimately too hard on ourselves for and shit so it's like you know what I'm gonna make mistakes this year I'm gonna say shit that I don't live up to I'm going to have goals that I don't meet, but like, shit, I looked back at a lot of my 2021s. I have a list of shit that I wrote down and, uh, a lot of it came true. <laughs> like, you know, I, good, yeah. there's active progress in that. And I think everybody last year and, uh, going into this year has made very active progress. And it's so hard to remind yourselves of that when you're only trying to do next video, next video, next video. It, it, it's kind of unreal. Like, that we got anything accomplished in the shit whole year that was 2020, yeah. you know, like that's, it's really an accomplishment in and of itself. Um, but now you're a hundred percent, right? Like I, I, I think a lot of us trying to do this kind of thing. It, it is, it's, it's a feeding ground or, or I guess a breeding ground for uh, being disappointed in yourself. Yep. Because, the 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 sky really is the limit on how much you could potentially do that it, it it's almost you almost forget how much you like need to take care of yourself and how much of it can be pushed aside to take care of those real life responsibilities that are more important than uploading a video about Sonic 3 and Knuckles today like super important you know super important so i hope i hope everybody has a, a good year and I hope everybody like, you know, makes those realistic goals and, and pushes through, but also remembers take care of yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. Like you'll you'll get through there. You'll make it. You'll do what you want as long as you just don't like give up and shit. Yeah. You know. 
And next week we'll be talking about how to give the, up, uh, how to, how to give up <laughs> on YouTube in 2021. A step by step guide on how to quit life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I like the idea that the more we do this podcast, the more we continue to talk about how we're gonna quit. Yeah, yeah. And um, like you might be thinking, I'm just gonna have a self fulfilling prophecy. Like you, you right. will eventually quit. But but what if we grift you into thinking that we're gonna quit, but you never quite know when we're gonna quit? You know. That is undoubtedly the the first use of the grift word on uh on another YouTube podcast. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it is, took yeah. sixty five episodes to get there, but we've we've arrived. We've arrived. Hell yeah! I I I think it's the ultimate running gag of the podcast. You know, like we I have a so. lot of running bits, but like that shit was established literally in like episode zero or episode <laughs> one by you. Yeah, you say it, and then every other couple episode you bring it up again. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So now I'm just on board. Now I'm just on board with the bit. I'm glad. I'm glad. It, it, it's one of those things where it's like, obviously, we're not going to fucking quit. Because <laughs> we could have done that a long time ago. Bro. Uh, multiple times. Yeah. I had plenty of reasons to quit, but I am too. Too in this thing. This I, I hope for whoever listens to this. Uh, and and has listened to another YouTube podcast before. You can say a lot of things about us, uh, and and things that would be very valid and easy criticism to make. Oh, Oh, hundred percent. But I hope one of them isn't like that. Me and Zach quit or drop things a lot because, like, man, we really don't. <laughs> like, we you know, we, we we've had multiple opportunities to, and we have dropped you know some things. Um. But this podcast started back in 2017, right? Like 2018. LHG started back in 2018. We have like, a group Let's Play channel that we have not quit yet. Like, with 300 uploads, like mine and Zach's channels are still around after, you know, 10 plus years on and off doing YouTube stuff. Like we might change and pivot directions a lot, but I really hope that like, if you've listened to this podcast or even remotely have talked to us in real life before that you would know that like, we don't quit shit. <laughs> like, you know, let it be known, let the record be known that like we, we have put in a lot more time than, than most people ever will, you know? And I think that's, oh, that's worth celebrating. Oh no, I agree. I agree. As much as, as much as we joke about like the, uh, the amount of inconsistencies, in our uploads or our content or you know whatever any kind of weaknesses we may have like i feel like one of our strengths is definitely like staying in there for the long haul because because there's definitely people that don't do that and i hope that if you're listening to this going into the new year you remember like just keep just keep going trust yep. me like shit will get better if you're having if you're having any kind of struggles mood so. but with that yeah. that's the episode that's the episode. Oh boy! Give a quick shout out to Max Mitten, our our local Calfro. He uh, he commented on the last episode. The people want more Calfro on LHG. Yeah. So you know, this is true. I agree. I agree. We got to get him in some more, some more Let's Play content. Yeah, it'd be epic. Maybe we could we can do some more of that this year. There's always the opportunity. We got some vacancies. I'll tell you that much. Like, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're looking for, yeah, yeah, yeah. if anybody's listening to this, like, man, you know, I want to do some LHG shit. Like, now the time, because <laughs> there ain't shit coming out for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, just hit us up and be like, yo, I want to do this thing. And then if somebody else wants to do it, then there you go. We can make it happen. Yeah, I agree. But anyways, thank you for the comment. Thank you for that comment. If you have a comment or a suggestion or a death threat, anything of the sort, just uh, you know, leave us a comment in the uh, the YouTube channel, or you can email us at another yt podcast at gmail dot com. We'll be happy to read it on the show. We'll call you shoddy. We will call you shoddy. <laughs> Damn. Okay, shoddy. <laughs> okay, shoddy. That, even though the picture is gone, it is still in my vivid memory. Like, I can't yeah. not forget about it. Yeah, I'm it's, never going to forget about that image. It's horrible. Anyways, I've been sad. And I've been a. Yeah.
and thank you for listening to this episode of another YouTube podcast. Bye. Bye-bye. Now seriously though, why is Dick so big? <laughs>